Hello everybody. So we are starting a new topic that is fuels, uh, which is unit 2B of engineering chemistry. So the contents of this uh, unit are definition of fuels, classification and characteristic of a good fuel. We will be learning about what is calorific value and how we are going to determine with the help of a bomb calorimeter. So numerical problems on the bomb calorimeter will also be discussed and practiced in this course. The composition and uses of natural gas, CNG, LPG will be discussed and finally why biofuels are considered as alternative sources of energy and under the biofuels we will be discussing the biomass and the biogas. Now the outcome of the course that means at the end of this uh, unit uh, you students you will be able to uh, uh, understand what is fuel, how you are going to classify fuels and what are the different applications. Now let us come to how you are going to define a fuel. So a fuel is any combustible substance which is basically having a carbon and hydrogen that means uh, the combustible substance has to be a hydrocarbon and uh, when we are burning this combustible substance in the presence of air or oxygen, large amount of heat is liberated. Now the heat is used economically for either household purposes or economically for industrial purposes. So that means the fuel can be defined as a combustible substance containing carbon. Uh, it can also con uh, contain hydrogen and other inorganic elements and so but carbon is the main source uh, uh, of uh, the main constituent of the fuel. So a fuel is a combustible substance containing carbon as the main constituent which on complete burning gives a large amount of heat that can be used economically. Now examples of fuels are wood, coal, kerosene, petrol, diesel, water gas. Now these are some of the examples under the fuels. Now let us see uh, the combustion reaction of a fuel that can be represented as follows. So you can see that uh, it, the fuel is represented as a hydrocarbon. So uh, hydrocarbon means uh, carbon and hydrogen. So such fuels when they are burned in the presence of oxygen, carbon dioxide is liberated, the water is uh, uh, evaporated as steam and large amount of heat is liberated as a result of this reaction. So you can understand that all, uh, uh, all such combustion reactions are exothermic in nature that means they are uh, liberating heat. So uh, how you are going to classify fuels? Now fuels can be classified into two categories. One is the primary or the natural fuel, another is the secondary derived or the manufactured fuels. So that means primary or natural fuels means they are uh, existing in uh, the earth's crust so that they are, we, uh, we are able to obtain uh, them naturally from the earth's crust. Whereas the secondary derived or the manufactured fuels are manufactured or derived from the primary or the natural fuels. Now, the uh, both the primary fuels or and the secondary fuels are further classified on the basis of their physical nature. So that means on the basis of whether the fuels are in the solid state, in the liquid state or in the gaseous state. Similarly, the secondary fuels are classified uh, on the basis of whether the fuel is in the solid state, whether they are play, uh, in the liquid state or whether they are in the gaseous state. Now the examples of uh, solid fuels under the primary uh, uh, fuels are the wood and the coal. The liquid fuels examples are petroleum and crude oil whereas the gaseous fuels are the natural gas. So that means all these categories that is wood, coal, petroleum, crude, crude oil, natural gas they are all existing in the earth's crust. That means they are existing on the earth's crust. They are, they are obtained uh, naturally from the earth's crust. Whereas uh, the solid secondary fuels examples are coke and charcoal. The coke and charcoal they are derived from the wood or and the coal. Uh, the liquid fuels coming under the secondary fuels are the petrol whereas the gaseous fuels coming under the secondary fuels are the coal gas. Now what is the characteristic of a good fuel? So we very well know that the most important characteristic of a fuel is the, uh, is the uh, 
the evolution of the heat or the liberation of the heat so a fuel is considered very good if it is able to evolve or generate large amount of heat so that means the uh, the main constituent of such fuels must, must be carbon and hydrogen so the more the amount of carbon and hydrogen present in the fuel the more will be its uh, calorific value or more amount of heat will be liberated but if the fuel is containing uh, besides the carbon and hydrogen if it is containing trace amounts of sulfur nitrogen oxygen then uh, what happens is that when you are going to burn such fuels the nitrogen and the, uh, the oxygen and the sulfur they get converted to nitric acid and sulfuric acid so that means the uh, conversion of nitrogen and sulfur to nitric acid and sulfuric acid also uh, gives rise to uh, uh, a large amount of heat but what happens is that after the complete combustion the nitrogen and the sulfur they are uh, converted to ash so that means this this decreases the calorific value of the fuel so that means the uh, a good fuel is one which is hydrocarbon in nature and which is, which is which is able to liberate large amount of heat so such fuels must have very high calorific value now the second important characteristic is that uh, the fuel must have low moisture content because if moisture is there then it will uh, reduce the heating value of the fuel now the third characteristic as what I have said earlier that uh, if the fuel is having some non-combustible substance like the inorganic elements then what happens is that during the combustion uh, after the con combustion the uh, non-combustible substances are converted to ash so this decreases the heating value or the calorific value so that means a good fuel should have minimum or negligible amount of non-combustible substances now the fourth characteristic is that it should have proper ignition temperature so what do you mean by ignition temperature it's the temperature at which the fuel starts to burn or catches fire so that means if the fuel is having a low ignition temperature then it will uh, the fuel will immediately catch fire that means all gaseous fuels have low ignition temperature whereas uh, fuel having a very high ignition temperature as we are seeing in the solid fuels now they are uh, what happens is they will take a longer amount of time to ignite so that means a fuel a good fuel should have a proper ignition temperature now the next characteristic that is the uh, fifth characteristic is that the fuels should be easy to handle store and transport now the sixth characteristic is that the a good fuel is one which uh, emits less amount of or minimum amount of poisonous products during combustion so that means they must be a good fuel must be environmental friendly now the next characteristic is that it should burn with more efficiency and less smoke so that means uh, the gaseous fuels they are they liberate no smoke at all whereas the solid fuels they are uh, liberating smoke so that means solid fuels are not desirable uh, whereas the gaseous fuels are desirable now the fuel is the next important characteristic is that the fuels should be available in plenty because if they are available in plenty then their uh, cost will automatically decrease so the next characteristic is should have a moderate rate of combustion and the final uh, characteristic is that the combustion should be easily controllable that means once the fuel catches fire or once the fuel gets ignited the flame should be easily controlled so that 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 is a very important characteristic of a good fuel now let us see what are the merits of solid liquid and gaseous fuel so depending upon the uh, the physical uh, characteristic of a fuel that means whether they are solid fuels liquid fuels and gaseous fuels each have their own uh, merits and demerits so first important characteristic is the calorific value solid fuels have the least calorific value whereas the gaseous fuels have the highest calorific value now in terms of cost the solid fuels are cheap whereas the gaseous fuels are costly now uh, with regards to uh, emission of smoke the solid fuels are uh, they emit smoke whereas the gaseous fuels they are they do not produce any smoke so that means uh, the gaseous fuels are environmental friendly whereas solid fuels are not environmental friendly now with related to ash that means if they uh, the fuel uh, having any non-combustible substance 
solid fuels always produce ash whereas the gaseous fuels do not produce ash so that means the solid fuels they have less calorific value whereas gaseous fuels they have the highest calorific value now with related to environmental friendly friendliness solid fuels are not environmental friendly because they emit poisonous gases or they may emit also smoke whereas the gaseous fuels they are highly environmental friendly now with related to handling cost and storage sorry with related to storage the solid fuels are uh, easily stored uh, transported and handled very easily whereas uh, the gaseous fuels they must be stored in closed containers so that means uh, extra precaution has to be taken during the storage of gaseous fuels now for handling cost the solid fuels have very high cost whereas the gaseous fuels have minimum cost now with related to safety the solid fuels are really very safe uh, whereas the gaseous fuels extra precaution has to be taken uh, 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 during the um, handling storage transport of gaseous fuels so that means the safety aspect of gaseous fuels is the least now related to ignition temperature the solid fuels they have very high ignition temperature that means they take longer amount of time to ignite whereas uh, in the case of gaseous fuels the ignition temperature is the least that means they easily easily catch fire so we, uh, extra precaution has to be taken during the handling of gaseous fuels now what is a calorific value of a fuel now the amount of heat produced by the complete combustion of a given mass of fuel that is defined as the calorific value and it is usually expressed in joules per kg or calories per gram now there are two forms in which the calorific calorific value can be expressed one is the gross calorific value or high calorific value another is the net calorific value or the low calorific value now the gross calorific value is when we are heating the fuel and the products of combustion are allowed to cool to room temperature so what happens when we are allowing the uh, products of combustion to cool to room temperature is that the uh, the hydrogen that is present in the fuel that is producing steam so that means when the steam is allowed to cool so that means some amount of heat is absorbed by the uh, by the steam for cooling down to room temperature so that means the latent heat of condensation of steam gets included in the measured heat so this is called as the gross calorific value now what happens to the in the case of the net calorific value is that when we are burning the fuel and the products of combustion are allowed to escape so that means the latent heat of condensation condensation of steam has to be subtracted from the gross calorific value to give rise to the net calorific value now here uh, uh, the mathematical expression is given uh, for the net calorific value it is denoted as ncv now it is equal to hcv or the gross calorific value minus the latent heat of condensation of steam or minus the latent heat of vaporization of water vapor so uh, how we are going to uh, determine the latent heat of condensation of steam is from this reaction we see that hydrogen is reacting with oxygen to give rise to water so that means two grams uh, two parts by weight of hydrogen is giving around approximately 18 parts by weight of water so that means one part by weight of hydrogen will give rise to nine parts by weight of water now if the percentage of hydrogen present in the fuel is h percentage then the latent heat of vaporization of water vapor or latent heat of condensation of steam will be what nine into h divided by 100 uh, uh, that multiplied by the latent heat of steam is the latent heat of condensation of steam so latent heat of steam is 587 calories per gram of water vapor produced so that means the ncv is equal to hcv minus 9 divided by 100 into h into 587 where h represents the mass of hydrogen now the calorific value the units are the uh, for the solid and the liquid uh, fuels are expressed in calories per gram or kilocalories per kg or British thermal unit per pound whereas the calorific value of gaseous fuels are expressed in kilocalories per meter cubed or British thermal unit per feet cubed so uh, hope you have understood this video thank you for listening